All right, lots more to focus on this week as well. A lot of misinformation to correct and to get through. Now, do you want to hear a joke? A good one. Here's the former Prime Minister, Rani Vikramasi. Ah, young people, what you call the millennials and Gen Z, their future depends on what we do. They have already lost hope in the future. The youth will curse us. They will say, you destroyed the country's future, you destroyed our future. Yep, the youth of this country has lost faith in this government. Why? Because this government is not providing chewing gum, free Wi-Fi and bracelets. Because this government is more busy correcting the uh, erroneous economic policies of the former Prime Minister that resulted in this nation being in a third world state. Now, in our last program, we introduced you to a group called the Vulture Fund Operators. What do they want? Well, they want Sri Lanka to continuously be in debt, or better yet, for the country to default. Because when that happens, people like Carlos de Souza, one guy who is holding Sri Lanka dollar bonds, will prosper heavily. The best case scenario yeah, is on this matter is Argentina. See how much they had to pay these vulture funds to settle when they defaulted. Because they took loans after loans is the main reason for them to default. Now here in Sri Lanka, parliamentarians are like Dr. Harsha De Silva and the former Prime Minister, who is an ardent fan of Carlos de Souza, and his theory of doom and gloom for Sri Lanka continuously has been ringing the IMF bell, asking and forcing Sri Lanka to get more loans. You have to talk with the international financial institutions, the international monetary agencies. You have to ask for a fresh financial assistance program. We must go to the IMF, negotiate with the IMF that we have sufficient money for the next two years. IMF loan natura api making bear in the bag. And when we are in a position to pay back our loans, he says, don't pay, restructure, because that's another, another avenue that will put our nation in more economic chaos. ने <laughs> Now, joining the go-to IMF song is our former second-in-command and a brilliant economic mind. Now, during his tenure, Sri Lanka flourished from the other side. Former Prime Minister Rani Vikramasinghe wants, despite this government, time and time after rejecting taking any more loans from IMF or any other institution, well, the former Prime Minister now wants this government to debate a proposal from the IMF for this country. Why? God only knows. This is what they do, as long as they can paint a picture of such dire economic conditions in Sri Lanka, for some reason they take a cheap thrill at putting our nation down. I sometimes wonder whether these goons would benefit if our country defaults. Here's another good example. About a couple of weeks back, opposition parliamentarian Dr. Harsha De Silva tweeted this out, stating that he could only buy one packet of milk. The supermarket refused him to purchase more than one. So he screamed at President Gotabe saying, Damn you, President, you and your whiskers of prosperity. Although it was an unpleasant situation for the parliamentarian to experience, he somehow managed to wrangle in the hashtag never to IMF because everything that's occurring in this country is related to the IMF. Funny, isn't it? How the opposition so badly wants us to go to the IMF and take more loans. I mean, even if a cow farted, ah, 
that cow farted because we did not go to the IMF. Hashtag opposition logic. Why can't Dr. Harsha De Silva buy more than one packet of milk? Has the country fallen so bad that individuals who visit high-end supermarkets in Colombo can't buy more than one packet of milk on a single day? Well, it's a good thing that we have brains, unlike the rest of the clowns who believe the good doctor after looking at that uh, Twitter thread. So what did we do? We asked the Consumer Affairs Authority, why the hell have you put a restriction as one packet of milk per customer in one purchase? Now, the chairman of the Consumer Affairs Authority, retired Major General DMS Disanaika, told Avdirana that no such rule or decision has been imposed by the government, either in any private supermarket or at the government outlet. Satosa. This is puzzling. Then if the government has not imposed, surely there is a shortage of milk production in the country, right? Again, we ask the same. From the chairman of the Palavata Dairy Industries, one of the biggest manufacturers of local milk powder. He was puzzled about what the heck are we even talking about? Because they don't have any dearth or shortage of production right now. They did during the COVID time, the initial stage. But there is nothing of that sort right now. So why is Dr. Harsha De Silva's supermarket outlet is not allowing the good doctor to take more than one packet of milk? We trace the said supermarket outlet and ask them, why are you restricting? The government has not imposed such a restriction, so why are you doing it? Now, the president of retail of that particular supermarket chain confirmed to us, and mind you, on their request, we are withholding their name, uh, they say that the only reason to limit the purchase of milk packet one per day in this particular outlet is mainly that if they, if they let people buy how much ever they want, they have experienced in the past that many come there to hoard milk powder packets. So to ensure that many have the opportunity to buy, they put a limitation, even though there is no such request or need to do so. So the good doctor chooses to go by himself to go to a private supermarket and then complains about restrictions put forth by that particular private supermarket as an issue with the country. This is how they fool you and me. This is their modern golden horse story. Even when another individual did uh, their due diligence to show the parliamentarian that this isn't the case, that people are actually buying what they want. The good doctor responds back with another picture of the, re the restrictions put forward by the private supermarket which clearly shows that they allow one packet per day and that it is a restriction by that particular outlet and not the country as a whole. And that also bids the question, <laughs> why on earth this doctor do you need so much milk for a single day? What he does with his milk is his thing. What the parliamentarian did and why it's so important that you and I know the truth is when the international media sees this, they tend to come to their own manipulated conclusions that Sri Lanka is going down the drain. The reason Dr. Harsha De Silva, the rest of the clown clan in the opposition, like the former prime minister, are doing their level best to showcase such doom and gloom mainly because they are pushing this government to follow their failed policies. And if this government do follow so for some ill-fated reason, then for sure this government too will fail eventually. Now these clowns in the opposition think that they can run back to power and have their day in the sun the very moment this government fails. Listen, when the people of this country elected President Gotabe Rajabaksa and the current government to power, they elected them to run the country differently. If the people wanted this country to be run like the debacle called good governance, then for sure people like Dr. Harsha De Silva and the former Prime Minister would still be in power. But it's not the case. Yet the so-called failed economists of the opposition continues to bring in and propose failed policies time and time after, which uh, while preaching to the world that what they suggest is the only way forward. Yes, it's the only way forward to the grave. These economic pundits are the very same people who predicted the worst for this country and who said that we will never even pay the 500 million sovereign bond back in January. <laughs> 
මේ මේ තැන් තැන් වලින් පොඩ්ඩ පොඩ්ඩ කීය කීය හරි එකතු කරගෙන හැකියාවක් නැහැ කියලා ලංකාවට ගෙවන්න තියෙන මේ විශාල ණය ප්‍රමාණය ගෙවන්න. Obviously this government will implement its economic policy and its proposals to get the country out of this crisis. And mind you a crisis created by the so-called economic minds of like the good doctor and the former prime minister. We have made sure that our debts are settled. We have put in place a investment regime which is very clear and that we can draw investment into the country. We have been able to roll over our debt without any difficulty at the current prices. Now that is not a reflection of a country in distress. Yeah, yeah. Yes, we do have challenges, but we are not in distress. So what these some of these people are trying to make out uh, Mahesh is that we are in distress. They are asking us to send the signal out saying may day may day may yes, day. Yes, yes. But if your ship is not in distress and you send the signal out like that you can be penalized because you are not, not supposed to do that. Now we have to make sure that we stabilize the situation and then we go forward and the plan that we have put together although the previous government never had a plan about what they were going to do as soon as i came in as governor once again the first thing that i did was to set out a plan with the with the help of all the experts at the central bank we articulated it we put it out in to the world so that people know what exactly we are doing True. and we are monitoring it as well as implementing it with with diligence Liberal thinking economists and their whole brigade has failed and failed immensely. So the question we all need to ask is well if things are so bad then if we elect people like Dr Harsha De Silva back into power along with the former prime minister we will be able to recover this country right? Well the thing is this country has done that already. Dr Harsha De Silva and the former prime minister Rani Wickremesinghe and the rest of the clown clan was in power from 2015 in the Yahapalne debacle. During that tenor they were part of the so called economic gurus of that joke of a government who steered this country to the most significant loss in it ever witnessed. Let me remind you of some uh, of the very same clowns who are now screaming and shouting about the dollar rate. Uh, by the time they took power in 2015 the rupee was uh, at 130 against the dollar the economic master mindry got us to 178 rupees against the dollar by 2019 the gdp growth of this nation was at 5% in 2014 yep 5% just 5 years after the end of the war the economic geniuses got that to 2.3% by 2019 without any assistance of any pandemic or any global crisis they single handedly managed to bring that down to 2.3% from 5% to 2.3% let's talk about the debt in 2014 the country's debt in comparison to the gdp was at 72.3% which is around 7300 billion rupees and that would mean now uh, when these economic masters took over they would turn things around right wrong because when they handed it back in 2019 the country's debt in comparison to the gdp rose to 86.8% that's over 13000 billion rupees that's almost double the amount of that debt uh, that existed prior Between March 2015 and March 2016 the government issued short uh, medium term and Sri Lanka uh, development bonds on 12 different occasions borrowing over 2711 million US dollars thus in the first 15 months of the Yahapalne government uh, when they were in power they obtained 6361 million US dollars in foreign loans to put matters into perspective this is enough to meet the entire foreign loans component of the mathal airport the hambantara port the norachole coal power plant the kalambo mathara highway the kalambo katnaika highway all put together there would be still enough money to build not one but two port cities one 500 megawatt sampur coal power plant and yet another mathal airport with final leftovers My dear friends, Dr. Harsha De Silva, the former Prime Minister Ranil Wickremesinghe, and the rest of the self-proclaimed economic gurus in the opposition are failed economists. Their economic theories have failed in the past and continues to fail in a colossal manner in the present as well. 
And it's absolutely soothing to hear that this government has opted not to ever take an ounce of financial advice from these individuals. Then Janamari Palavin, the Hitian Arctic Vatila, Live Gilagian, Tamun Nansalagi, Arctic Vishak Nugi, Tirata Bankulutino, Arctic Vatino, Janamari Panda, Live Villa Lakianagela, Vita Vadia, the Esapalikan, we put that Durabala, Tava Kalika, Santo Saganda Hadan in Atu, Mirati Arctic Vatina, Mudalamati Vare, Itamat, Daxalesa, Etumaga Amatian, Mehevanakin, Vitrak, Abi Pahadilu again. All right, let's get more insights into the economic story of our nation. Joining me now is the governor of the central bank himself, Ajit Dimad Kabral. Thank you very much, sir, for joining me. He was uh, also formerly the state minister of money and capital markets and state enterprise reforms. He was in charge of reviving the economy after the Hapalne government busted it. Thank you very much, governor, for joining me once again. Uh, well, governor, uh, it is very evident that this government doesn't want to take any advice from the so-called economic gurus of the Hapalne government. Do you think... The formulas that you guys are applying right now are working. And honestly, when will we see some tangible results that is felt by the people? If you look at the formulas that have been applied by the previous government, they were instrumental in reducing the economic growth from 7% to 2%. They also were the policies that made Sri Lanka's debt to GDP ratio go up from 72% to 86%. The rupee depreciated from 132 to 185. So obviously if we had pursued the same path, we would have been in serious trouble. So we don't really need to go through that same pain. We have changed the policies and we are, we are sincerely of the view that our policies would work. Of course we did have some disturbance with regard to the COVID, but now we are quite uh, confident that the policies that we have put in place will deliver us through to the uh, goals that we have originally set out for us, for the country. So we are looking at a 4% growth last year. Uh, most probably this year we will have a growth of about 5%. We have so far been able to maintain our rupee as well as interest rates in benign levels. So that is a challenge no doubt. But at the same time, our exports are robust. Our remittances are now picking up once again. We believe that Sri Lanka will be well on the path to recovery and that would be felt by the people. Indeed, uh, Governor, the business community wants to know when they can receive normal trade abroad, uh, do business all around the world. When will we see them returning to their normal status just like uh, pre-COVID times? Already we see many of the numbers coming back to normal. Exports have actually risen from about $11 billion per year to about $13 billion last year. Remittances are somewhat down, but I believe that also should pick up with the policies that we have put in place. Imports have been robust. In fact, the imports have been more than what we have expected, and that's something that we have to sometimes be conscious of, that we don't allow exports imports to go well above the export levels because that can also pose some challenges to the entire economy. So these are matters that are being balanced one against the other and we believe that uh, the already the conducive environment is being prepared. But naturally as a result of tourism not being one of the key sources of revenue for the last two years has had an impact on the economy. But not, notwithstanding that we are, we are seeing tourism back on track and we are confident that with that coming back to normal levels, things will be normalized fast and we would see a fairly normal situation in the next few months to come. Well, despite all these efforts uh, taken by the government, many international organizations are predicting the worst for Sri Lanka governor. What is your response to that? I think they believe that an economy is a static condition. Economies are dynamic conditions. It changes every day. The steps that we are taking are also changing the entire structure of our economy and changing the way our economy is moving. So if you take a standstill position and take a viewpoint, that can sometimes be quite uh, the wrong impression that you are creating. So I think some of these um, so-called economists as well as so-called analysts are guided more by the Facebook than anything else. 
So what we would advise them to do is to understand that we too know the challenges. It's not that we don't know that there are certain challenges that are being faced by the country. We see some of the advanced nations facing the highest ever levels of inflation. The US is having their inflation levels at the range of the highest in 40 years. Europe is no different. So these are challenges that are common to all countries. Sri Lanka is no exception. But through these challenges, we are grappling through. And there may be a few challenges that we will have to face with uh, certain changes in our policies, which we are doing ourselves. And we are confident that these people who are detractors, who have these doomsday attitudes, will probably be seeing for themselves the change in the environment, the change in the way that the country is moving. And that is already beginning to have an effect. And we are seeing that now. We are seeing growth back again. You take any, any type of uh, activity in the country, you, can, you have seen a massive uh, change. You see all those happening. The tourists are coming. The remittances are also improving. Exports are taking place. Import businesses also, notwithstanding whatever anyone may say, are growing. So I think that needs to be recognized and that needs to be also appreciated that notwithstanding all these challenges, Sri Lanka is moving forward and that's the message that we would like to give everyone as soon as possible. All right, let's leave it at that. Governor of the Central Bank, Ajit Nivad Khadbrao, thank you very much, sir. I appreciate it. Let's take a short commercial break. Upon our return, we'll introduce you to the la latest season as taking shape in Geneva called Bashing Sri Lanka as the UNHRC. This is State of the Nation. Back in a moment. <laughs>